hello 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 guys welcome 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 to my channel i am carolise and you know actually i have a meeting right now and somehow the time zones got confused and i thought i was meeting with the person at 6 30 eastern standard time but they were on mst time so i thought okay while i'm in this little mode waiting for them to come online let me just make a quick video and talk to you guys about something I haven't talked about at all on my channel. So I want to talk to you today about tech debt. Yes, tech debt. So what is tech debt or technical debt? So technical debt has a bunch of definitions, but I'll give you my version of it. It's basically when you choose to do something that you know is not very optimal right technically but you choose this option because it's the fastest it gets to market quicker it's probably the easiest and you do it but you're conscious that there's a better way to do it you know that there is a more elegant way a more streamlined way a way that can be maintained better but you choose the quickest path to launch or to release and you do something that's a quick fix and you know that you need to go back and fix this. So it's the rework, right? It's the rework because of prior decisions that you made. Um, and it's the, the refactoring of code that you know wasn't done the right way, right? <laughs> or the best way um, in, in whatever you're building. So technical debt is one of those slippery things that if you're not careful, you end up accruing a lot of it. And even though in the short term you get things out faster, you can do little quick fixes, it always, always, always comes back to bite you. And when it comes back to bite, it bites with a vengeance. <laughs> right? So you do not want to get into a, a cycle where you're churning things out, but you're not able to maintain them because the code is a spaghetti code. The way they have built it is just like unmaintainable. If somebody new comes along and tries to make sense of this, they're like, what the heck did they do to get this thing to work? And so what happens a lot of the times is that while you're in the decision process, the product owner, the project manager, whoever may make a decision to get the project out on time, and they may intend to come back later and fix it the right way but sometimes they don't and then it stays there and god forbid that person leaves now you end up with this mess in the background <laughs> in the code that it's very difficult for a new person to unravel and refactoring that building on top of that is even worse i'm going to show you this this image that i found of just what tech debt is right it's like a broken house and you're trying to build a third floor. So as you try to improve your, your software your technology, you can't build better things on broken foundations, right? So tech debt is like that. It's like over time, you accrue this debt that you need to pay. And you pay that by fixing the things that you do. So yes, you have to make sacrifices. Yes, you have to make tough decisions when you have to get something through the door. But you shouldn't be... <laughs> You should be in this world where you're constantly doing these kind of shortcuts and then not addressing them um, properly. So as a business analyst or product person, product manager or product owner, um, it's part of our job to try to make sure that these tech debt items don't slip through the cracks, right? So we don't want to, to stop um, putting things out quickly, right? So you have to decide okay, is this worth the effort to make it be done the best way possible? Or can we just do the shortcut, get to the door and get customers an answer, and then we can come back and fix later. That might be completely <laughs> plausible, financially viable, uh, keep our clients, you know, they renew their contract with us, etc. That's fine. But we need to also document where the gap is. So you need to be able to say, we made this decision for X, Y, Z reason, but here's what that means. It means that we're not able to do this. It means that we need to go back and fix this. It's very difficult sometimes to really quantify or document what the gap really is going to be because we spend so much time focusing on what the shortcut is. <laughs> what can we do right now? Um, that we really, it's, it takes effort to figure out, okay, what should we have done 
the right way and have the discussions around that. And because you're not going to do it right now anyway, sometimes it gets thrown in the backlog without any information and you're like later on looking like, where does this story come from? I don't know, delete. <laughs> or it just evaporates and um, nobody ever looks back at it. So it is our responsibility to make sure these tech deck that we are accruing as we build our features that we actually make sure that it's documented somewhere and that the product owner can have the opportunity to prioritize these tech debt items so that we can continually improve and pay off our debt. If we don't pay it off as we try to build new features, we're just going to end up with more problems. And it's going to cost us more to build because we didn't do the right thing in the first place. So I would encourage us to one, document the gap as to what should we have done. Yes, this is what we're doing now, but what should we have done? Uh, what does that entail? Create a user story for that. If you write documentation, create it in the documentation somewhere and remind the product owner that here are the things that we have under tech debt that we need to, to work towards paying off, right? Uh, and paying off means uh, refactor the code to do it the right way, right? It is very common for tech debt to be pushed out of, of view. So you have a sprint, for example, and you're working towards this particular feature, and then there's a one or two tech debt items in there, and reach capacity of the sprint, and you're like, well, we got to cut here. And then <laughs> they cut it out, or it goes back in the backlog, or it stays in the backlog. So sometimes it's very difficult to see people pulling into tech debt unless they really have another feature that is dependent on that tech debt. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, we got to solve all these things at once which is also bad because you don't want to accrue so much tech debt that now when you want to do a new feature, you got to do all of this stuff at once. And when you're doing a lot of technical things in your backlog, in your sprint, it feels like there's no output. And you're like, why did we do this whole sprint? Only because the things sometimes are not demonstrable, um, at least in a demo way that product can see. So my point is some companies, they try to make sure the tech debt is being handled by having like a, a percentage that they say, okay, of every sprint, we want 25% to be on reducing tech debt. Or they have some kind of metrics or some kind of OKR that ensures that if they're making shortcut decisions along the way, that they're uh, recovering that in how they address the tech debt. The product owner has a very big part to play in uh, making sure we address tech debt because they have to prioritize what we work on. If they say we only keep working on new features and enhancements and you know all the bells and whistles, then that's what we work on. But it means that the things that we are accruing as we go along are not going to be addressed until the time when it, it all <laughs> affects customers or there is some big repercussion like why did we do it this way well if you look at the decision that you made a couple months ago you decided not to address this tech debt right so it's not a finger finger pointing game at all the whole team takes responsibility for things like this but i, I wanted to just call out that you should be documenting your technical debt you should put it in the backlog on your requirements document you should be discussing it when you go to plan for whatever feature you're doing if you're doing sprint planning you need to talk about the tech debt in the sprint planning, you need to make sure that the, the product owner is aware of all the things that are under the tech debt that need to be addressed. And just do your best to make sure it doesn't fall through the cracks, right? It's not an easy thing to manage because it's very technical, right? Sometimes when you hear them talk about it, you're like, I don't even know what they're talking about. What is, um, you know, Ruby on Rails and we need to uh, move over from this version to that version and they have deprecated this feature we need to update all of our API call I don't know you know sometimes it gets very very in the weeds but it doesn't matter you just need to know if you don't know it's okay you need to talk to the people who do know and make sure they give you the information to document it or they document it themselves but it has to be there it can't be falling through the cracks it cannot be uh, almost forgotten it has to be front and center otherwise it's going to come back to bite you so <laughs> that was my little chat on tech debt. I hope that you guys are having a wonderful time out there in BA world and that you will be able to help your team to reduce the tech debt or solve them. So that's what I have for you for now. See you guys later. I got to jump to my meeting. Take care. Bye.